Hey, good evening. Uh, thanks for joining us for an, for a, another edition of uh, Lighthouse Community Church uh, Together in the Word, uh, Wednesday night uh, uh, video. It's been a while since we've had one, and I apologize for that. We will uh, kind of get back into this and start uh, doing this every Wednesday, having a, a little recap or a special look at one of the chapters that we've been reading as we uh, go through the Word together, uh, chapter a day. And uh, today, I want to take a look at Psalm 137 just briefly. If you've been reading along with us, you may have, have read Psalm 137 yesterday. And uh, honestly, you may have been very shocked by what you read. I know I was. It's been a long time since I'd read that psalm, and I was reminded um, very graphically of just the, uh, how awkward uh, that psalm could be. As a matter of fact, uh, one commentator, uh, one of my favorite commentators, a man named Leopold, writes this. He says, the present day reader is apt to find himself torn between conflicting emotions when reading the psalm. Strong sympathy wells up in the heart for the sorry lot of the captives in Babylon. A shock of horror at the almost implacable hatred that one seems to find expressed in the concluding verse. It does, indeed, seem almost unthinkable. And let's take a look at just what that last, how that last verse reads, because that's really where we're going to spend our time. Uh, verse 9 says this, says, How blessed will be the one who seizes and dashes your little ones against the rock. Uh, that, that is just on the surface. Uh, that is absolutely appalling. And, it, and, and it, it, it's hard to imagine how that could be found in Scripture and how that could be, how that could be one of the Psalms and how that could be, how that could be okay in any sense. But let's, let's take a look at the little bit bigger context. Let's read uh, Psalm 137, verses 7 through 9, and see what that says. Remember, O Lord, against the sons of Edom, the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it to its very foundation. O daughter of Babylon, you devastated one. How blessed will be the one who repays you with the recompense with which you have repaid us. How blessed will be the one who seizes and dashes your little ones against the rock. Uh, the context here is, is that the Jews have been, have been sent into exile. Uh, they be, they've been disciplined by God uh, for idolatry, disobedience, for disbelief. Uh, but the nation that came in and that God allowed to come in uh, to take them captive, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't just a, a peaceful overthrow. I've uh, got to understand that the nations during this time, the surrounding nations, the nations that, uh, that, that the Jews were supposed to be a light to and to, and, and to reflect the, the glory and greatness of God to, um, these nations were evil, hateful um, totally corrupt people. They were violent and they were evil. And when they would come in and, and, and they would overtake a country, they would defeat a, an army. Uh, they would do unspeakable things, not just to the warriors, but to the citizens, the old, the young, uh, men, women, children, infants. And they would, they would do absolutely horrific things to them kill them, abuse them, violate them in ways that, that are not even mentionable. And, and that is the context in which this is set. The Jews are living in Babylon. They're living in captivity. They've, uh, they've been taken out of their homeland, but they just haven't lost their homeland. They've lost their culture. They've lost their identity, and they've lost so many of their people, and they've suffered powerfully under the hands of their captors and the in invading armies have just done have violated their people um, intensely and so here we have the writer of this psalm first of all we got to understand that's the context but also notice what he says he says remember O lord against the sons of edom the ones who said raise it raise it to its foundation uh, he's calling out to god and this is not something where, where, where a violent revolt is welling up. Uh, they're asking God to, they're asking God to vindicate them. They're asking God to, to serve justice um, uh, upon those who had done such unspeakable things to their own people. Uh, so remember that he's calling for God. The writer's calling for God to step in. And as, as one commentator said, he was submitting his, his, his most precious hatred. He was submitting that to God and giving that to God and allowing God to, to do it, to, 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 uh, take revenge as it were 
in God's way, in God's time, rather than his own, trusting that God would, would, would execute the best and fullest justice upon uh, these people. And then when he says, he says in verse 8, How blessed will be the one who repays you with the recompense with which you've repaid us. How blessed will be the one who seizes and dash your little ones against the rock. He's saying the one who God uses to deal out justice upon you, that, that, that nation, that people group, they will be blessed because they will have been used by God to execute God's judgment and to execute God's justice upon a wicked people. And when he says, when he talks about the recompense with which you have pay, repaid us, uh, that's parallel to how blessed will be the one who seizes and dashes your little ones against the rock. Uh, that's what would have happened to the, to the children, the infants of the Jews uh, by these people. And what the writer is saying, he, he is saying, God, allow, allow these people to experience what we've experienced. Make them suffer the same fate that we have suffered. Make them taste and experience and feel the horrors that we've had to feel. And again, he's calling out to God. He's submitting that to God. Uh, but he's, he's not just randomly just, just bringing up evil from within himself. He is calling for God to do to them what they had done to the Jews. And that was, and that was, that, that was the way of these armies and these nations in the, uh, and during this day. That's how they, when they would invade a country, that's what these countries, that's what these nations, these people groups would do. They were just absolutely evil and vile people. And so the writer here in Psalm 137 is really calling out for God to repeat, repay them and, and, to, and to serve justice and execute justice on behalf of the Jews. So I hope that gives you a little bit of a perspective on a, on a very interesting, um, awkward psalm uh, that can really be confusing and, uh, and, and, and upsetting. So anyway, uh, thanks for joining us tonight uh, for another edition of Together in the Word, and we will see you again next Wednesday.